like to share with you six tips for effective Bible reading, gaining an understanding of God's Word. We've been looking at some ways to get the most benefit from reading our Bible. We've had a couple lessons on some of the beautiful gems of truth found in Psalm 119, the longest chapter in the Bible. And then we uh, had a couple lessons related to rightly dividing or rightly handling, uh, applying the word of truth. Both of my parents were serious students of the Bible, and I am so thankful that I was exposed to its truth daily from in infancy. In this lesson, I'd like to share with you some practical tips for effective Bible reading that might help you, even those of you who may have found yourselves getting bogged down and discouraged before, maybe giving up in earlier attempts. I am David Herzman of Eagles Wings Ministries, and I want to help the Word of God become a daily part of your life and help you benefit from its truth and knowledge and the strength that flows from it. Whether you're presently a Christian believer or a backslider, a total unbeliever, you will benefit from the reading of the Holy Bible. If you're an unbeliever, reading the Bible will not save you, will not make you into a Christian, but for many readers, the Bible has been the path of an awakening and enlightenment that led them to a saving knowledge in the Lord Jesus Christ. I've known many people who set out to read the Bible clear through, maybe in a year, and have used various charts or tracts or pamphlets or apps to provide some reading schedule to guide them through. These usually involve reading about four chapters a day from specific places in the Bible, and they've probably helped many people, but they can also discourage you when you get to some of the slow-moving passages of Scripture, such as the genealogies of Bible characters in the Old Testament. Or if you miss a day or more, you get bogged down. Maybe very difficult to get caught up, but very easy to get discouraged, and unfortunately, many people soon give up. I'm going to share some reading tips with you that should help you to keep making progress and gaining understanding of the magnificent Word of God. I do believe that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. First, tr choose a translation of the Bible that's readable for you, unless you are already quite comfortable with the Old English of the King James Version, I recommend the New King James Version. It's quite similar, but it has updated many archaic words and phrases. Second, make up your mind to read clear through in some logical pattern, but not necessarily quickly, nor simply from Genesis to Revelation. I'm going to give you some tips on that. Don't try to get through in a year if you're not used to it. Our goal should be to read with understanding, gain the knowledge of the Bible. Time is the variable. Learning is the constant. If you are trying to hurry through your Bible reading according to somebody else's premeditated plan, you are less likely to be gaining much understanding, and you may be setting yourself up for discouragement and failure. I've read the Bible through dozens of times in several translations, and even on a tablet. But for me, I find that about a year and a half is what works best. I'm not a fast reader, but I do feel like I get quite a lot from my reading. Fourth, divide the Bible into about three parts and read daily from each of those portions of Scripture. I recommend the first portion to be the first part of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. I uh, recommend that first portion starting there. And then the next portion from the, what we call the books, of prof, uh, the books of poetry, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Solomon. And finally, your third portion, I would recommend reading from the New Testament. 
Beginning in Genesis, much of it is interesting history without many genealogies which tend to get people bogged down. The same is true with Exodus, or most of it, and the other early books of the Bible. You could uh, be reading two or three chapters in that part of the Bible. During the same period of time, you could be reading a psalm or two, depending on their length. Maybe reading some in the morning and other portions in the evening. And finally, a New Testament chapter. Maybe beginning in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. So you are dividing your Bible reading into three places. This gives you variety while also helping you gain an understanding of how the Bible all connects together. So, while you're working your way through the Old Testament, eventually you will come to those more difficult passages of Scripture. It seems like they're almost an endless list of names. No, it's not endless. You will get through it. Which uh, you don't recognize and are hard to pronounce. And I recommend that you work your way through those chapters, just a chapter or two at a time. These verses are in there for a purpose, but they probably meant more to the original readers than they do to us. Just like studying your own family tree would probably mean more to you and be more interesting to you than studying my family tree. But eventually, with this list of names in the Bible, you will recognize some names and they will connect with other places in the Bible. It may help to use a, a thin pen and uh, lightly divide the long names into syllables, making it easier to come up with reasonable pronunciations. Face the truth. These are not fantastic, inspirational passages of Scripture. But if you work your way through them, it will contribute to your character and your love for God's Word. While you are slowly working your way through these, you may want to read longer passages in Psalms or Proverbs or the New Testament. You may want to read some of the Psalms or Proverbs almost a verse at a time and pause to think about each one for the wisdom you are reading. You will discover that the Bible is up to date and absolutely relevant in the 21st century. A couple other short tips. Be sure to mark what you have read, and underline or highlight things that really stand out to you. Remember, the goal is knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, knowing God and loving God, and applying His truth to your life. You will soon be gaining more benefit from reading God's Word than most people ever believe to be possible. What happens if you miss a day? Using this method, there is a simple solution. Resume the next day. And whatever you do, don't allow Satan to come and beat you over the head for your failure. God wants to speak to you through his word. He knows exactly where you are in your journey. Consistently reading the Bible and uh, seeking to apply it or its principles every day in your life will be very rewarding in your spiritual growth. So if you miss a day, don't give up, don't get discouraged. Just proceed the next day, and you're still on track. Everybody is di different, and your reading habits are probably not exactly like mine. But I think these tips will give you a workable starting point and will help the Bible to begin to be a precious daily part of your life. You will soon discover some variables that work uh, well for you. Please share your experience with us in the comments or by email. I want to encourage you to keep plugging away at it, and you will be through the Bible in a year and a half or so, maybe less, and you won't have to fulfill somebody else's expectations or rigid schedule to do it. Give it a try. Be sure to like and share and subscribe. If you go ahead and watch another of our videos, it will help our content to reach more people. Pray for the effectiveness of this video ministry. We'll see you again soon. May the Word of God be a blessing to your life today.